Let's review this Phoebus Eagle Ray PW00, the green dial one. I don't remember the exact reference number. So it's been actually quite some time since I reviewed a Phoebus watch. It's been almost a year since the last Phoebus uh, review and it's been exactly a year since the last time I reviewed an Eagle Ray watch. So the last one I reviewed was the GMT version. It was a quartz GMT version for around $200. That watch was very popular with you guys and actually sold out even before I was able to do a review. This watch here, not as popular. In fact, it's been released for about three months now. I've had it for about two months and uh, it's still available on the website. I think one out of four color combinations is sold out. The other three color combinations, including this green dial version, are available. So we're gonna try to answer why. Why isn't this version here as popular as the GMT version? Before we get started with the review of this watch, I should let you know that this watch was provided for this review for free. We get to keep it after the review is done. Also, there is an affiliate link in the description of this video. Uh, use that link if you want to support the YouTube channel and if you're interested in buying one of the Phoebus watches. Don't use it if you don't. Uh, it's all good. Uh, just want to be transparent and let you guys know. Now let's talk about the details of this watch and let's start with the case dimensions. So the watch has a diameter of 41 millimeters. It's 47 millimeters from one lock to another. However, there is this first protruding link on the watch. So the actual lock to lock distance is about 52 millimeters. That's what it would look like on your wrist. It's not 47, it's 52 if you choose to wear it on the supplied uh, metal bracelet. 20 millimeter lug width and it's 14.2 millimeters thick although it does appear thinner on the wrist and a lot of the thickness comes from the overall design of this watch this is of course a compressor style diver watch compressor style diver watches do have to be slightly thicker plus this one also has a domed sapphire crystal so it has an appearance of a thicker watch however on the wrist i think it wears slimmer uh, two crowns one at the two o'clock position one at the four o'clock position the two o'clock position that operates the internal rotating bezel. It's a bi-directional bezel and it's also very smooth. So there's no clicking of any kind. You simply unscrew it and then you set the bezel into the position that you want it to be set in. Then you push the bezel in and you screw it back in place. Of course, don't operate the bezel underwater. So that's one of the negatives of a compressor style uh, diver watch. And that's why I'm not a huge fan of them. I think they look cool and they have this cool vintage throwback. But if I were to choose one diver watch for my collection, I definitely would not choose a compressor style watch. I would choose a traditional diver because you can operate them underwater, which makes them a little bit more functional. The crown, the four o'clock position, that's the crown to operate the movement. This one is powered by the Seiko NH35. We are very familiar with this movement. It's found in a lot of micro brand watches. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details of this one. I'm just gonna say that it's pretty accurate. I'm getting within five seconds per day. So it's not too bad for a Seiko NH35. Um, what else? You also have a stainless steel bracelet and a stainless steel case. The finishing on the case is all right. It's not fantastic, but it's not the worst I've seen. For a watch at around 360 bucks, I think it's okay. Uh, I like the chamfered edges. It adds a little bit of a visual interest to the case. I also like the polished finish on the bezel. Again, it adds a little bit of visual interest and also makes the swatch a little bit more blingy on the wrist. In fact, this swatch was a lot more blingy uh, than I was expecting. The crowns have this high polish finish, the chamfered edges have this high polished finish, the slight high polished finish on the bezel, and also boxed and domed sapphire crystal make up for a lot of surface area that could potentially reflect sunlight. So if you're not into flashier watches, this one is probably not for you. Previous versions of Eagle Ray watches did come on a rubber strap or a leather strap. I know that they released a model with a stainless steel bracelet a while ago. I never reviewed that model, so this is my first encounter with a stainless steel bracelet for these Eagle Ray models. And I gotta say, it's pretty good. They've done some visual trickery, some money saving techniques uh, that I think work pretty well. So first of all, this clasp, it's a double push deployment clasp with the Phoebus logo on it. A little bit of a chamfered edge here, however, it's not done in high polish, it's all brushed finish. A little bit of money saving there. Three micro adjustments, it is also a scissor engineered clasp. Not bad. Now some of the money savings is clearly done with the design of these links. At a first glance, they look like 
four or five separate links. However, if you take a closer look, you can see that it's all one solid link. It's just designed to look like four separate links. So there is a bit of a high polish finish there. It's not fantastic, it's not awful, it just is. And having this bracelet designed with one link instead of four, of course, cuts down the cost. It also doesn't make bracelet as comfortable as it could be. On a plus side, we do have screw in place pins, which is pretty good to see for watch under 400 bucks. What I don't like are these first protruding links. They protrude way too much and they make the watch wear much larger than it actually is. So that's one of the biggest negatives that I have about this watch. I took this watch skiing with me, I took this watch for a bike ride and I found it to be a little bit too large, a little bit too overpowering. First of all, the weight, 162 grams, it's a little bit too heavy for a sports watch in my opinion. Uh, for a diver watch, maybe it's forgivable depending on your wrist size. And also depending on your wrist size, you'll be either happy or dissatisfied with the size of this watch. Even though it's only 41 millimeters in diameter, it's pretty common for a diver watch to have 41 millimeter diameter. The way it wears on the wrist, it wears much larger. So uh, keep that in mind. For smaller wrists or people that prefer smaller watches, this is not it. Phoebus has other models that would fit your wrist much better. Taking a closer look at this dial, the dial is done pretty well. I like that gradient, it kind of goes from dark green, almost black, to a much lighter shade of green at the center of the dial. We have these syringe style hands for minutes and hours, a lollipop on a seconds hand with a red tip, some writing on the dial, that octopus by the 12 o'clock position, that's always a point of controversy. Some people like it, some people hate it. I don't mind it, I think it looks okay. This watch is not really taking itself too seriously. We have a date window at the three o'clock position, it's not, color matched, I would have preferred a black date wheel with a white font, but I guess you can't win them all. We have a rail track for seconds, and then we also have Roman numerals for one, two, three, and four, and so on until 12 o'clock. I don't know why they've done that. I really don't like that look. Just regular hashes would do much better with this design. Having those Roman numerals kind of throws everything off symmetry. I don't like it, but maybe you do. Uh, I think it's more of a personal preference. And then uh, there's plenty of loom on this watch. Here's a loom shot for you. The loom is evenly applied and it looks great. It's bright, uh, no complaints with the loom whatsoever. So now it's time to try to answer this question. Why was this watch not as popular as the GMT version of the same watch? And I think it comes down to two things. Number one, as I mentioned, the size of this watch. It's just a little bit too chunky. It's quite thick. It also wears large. So it's not gonna fit everyone as well. And number two, the price. The $200 GMT version of this watch did have a quartz movement, but it was almost half the price of this watch. Plus I think it looks better on the rubber strap as opposed to this metal bracelet. Uh, so I think that's why this watch is not as popular as that $200 model. Uh, that one was an excellent watch. This watch here is good, but it could use some improvement. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found this review helpful. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. All that helps. If you're curious, today on my wrist, I'm wearing my G-Shock. I did a full review of this, Cassie Oak. Uh, that video is found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave it linked in the description below. Also, in the description below, there are a couple of other links. There is a secret link and there is a link to bonddatastraps.com. Take a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had fun and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, there you are. Seems like you're enjoying sitting at this desk.